things like that. So many people, the news and observer, the news media, does not know what an assault weapon is. Hear, hear. It is not. I'm not going to go into much. I don't want to go back. I put it away. But I know what an assault weapon is. Baseball bat. <laughs> now, now, the simple configuration of a rifle does not make it an assault weapon. Yeah. Right, Harry, I want you to tell this crowd what an assault weapon is to come from official. I know what it is, and I'm sure you do. Well, me and you won't agree on what assault weapon is, and that everybody's got their own opinion, and that's why you hear so much stuff about it today. Uh, you know, what people don't understand, some of these AK-47s and these type weapons are used for target shooting. Do they need that high-capacity magazine? That's the question to ask. I mean, and that's the thing that you go to your congressmen and your legislators and you ask. I, I don't, as I said, and Kerry and Jerry can stand up here and, and give us their thought. We've got to do what the law says. Like I say, I've had guns all my life. And I still will keep a gun. And like I tell y'all, they're not going to take your gun, whether it's assault weapons or not. Are they going to put some restrictions on them? I don't know. They tried that once before, and it showed it didn't work. But I guarantee you they're going to try to do it again. Jerry, y'all want to come in? As far as assault weapons, you know, that's the problem there because I don't think that nobody's... Uh, actually define exactly what that assault weapon is. I know I saw a list from out today and some of my questions. But it's like we were talking the other day, man, so why would anybody want AK-47? Why would anybody want to have it? What was the need? Well, same thing could be asked. Why do you need a Corvette that says 200 miles an hour on it when you might set a mile the maximum speed limit anyway? Max was going to be seven. Because I want it. And I'm a long time citizen. I can have it. And as far as the registration, a gentleman asked about the registration when you get a government. Uh, the registration part. When you get a government in the sheriff's office, I, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't run that way. But, uh, you, you, Jerry. You get a permit from us to buy that weapon. That weapon, and it is retained by the gun owner. ATF is going to get it. We don't, there's no such thing as a registered weapon in our county or your county. There's no such, that animal does not exist. There are a lot of gray laws. People and citizens really don't even understand either. Just like they always said, well, convicted felons cannot own a weapon, cannot own a firearm. Yes, you can. They can own an antique weapon. They can own a revolver, black powder. They can own a black powder um, rifle. Believe it or not, it's right there. You stop that convicted felon from having a weapon or a rifle. No, you did not. There's a lot of gray areas there. We do have gray areas that are in the current laws right now. Believe it or not, uh, when the Brady, before the Brady Bill came about, the laws, gun laws in North Carolina were somewhat stronger. Used to, the sheriff could put a limit on how many days that gun permit was good for. Folks, as it is today, it's good for five years. Now, what does that mean for a gray area? That means that if I go out and have a domestic violence thing, saw my wife, beat her, whatever, and uh, I've got three or four permits sitting in the drawer at home. Now, I'm told I can't have any more guns. But guess what? I got me a permit with a sheriff's name on it, and I give you something. That's a problem. The, the, the terminology is having a lot of effect on this. And I saw a report tonight on WREL regarding the double homicide in Garner, and they had arrested a 19-year-old woman for carrying a variation of an AK-47. And she has been charged with Possession of a weapon of mass destruction. Oh, man. Where does that come from? That is a law. That is a law. It is sort of like a law. That is a law. Slow down. But 
that's that's the way the law is written. That's what we when we go before, and that's my case. And I stayed up at four o'clock this morning working on that case. So if I get grouchy once in a while, that's the reason I hadn't had a lot of sleep. But uh, but that's the way the law is written, folks. And if y'all would stand up and pay attention to some of the way the judges are doing things and some of the laws that's coming out of the legislature and do what you're doing tonight, I wouldn't be here tonight like I am. Because a lot of these laws... I've been in this business, I said, 45 years, and a lot of the laws is really putting a damper on us because if we don't cross every T and dot every I, and I believe you, I don't want to violate anybody's rights, but we got problems. And we need your support, just like you're here tonight. And this gentleman's had his hand up for a long time. All right, appreciate the opportunity to come out here and speak with y'all. Um, first of all, the comment on they, on your comment that they will not take your guns. I remember back a few years ago during Hurricane Katrina down in Louisiana, that law abiding citizens did have their firearms confiscated from them. And on a second note, on a second note, I'm a United States Marine serving as a uh, sergeant. I'm a sergeant. <laughs> took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, <coughs> foreign and domestic. So what that empowers me to do is not obey any unlawful order. Amen. 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 My challenge to, to the public servants here tonight, including the law enforcement, is to educate yourselves on what's, on what's happening across the country. Because this is it's not here in North Carolina, it's across the country. And there's a lot of folks upset about it. So my point is, is I challenge y'all to educate y'all yourself and learn about what's going on, what's yes. happening in the country. Okay, so I took that oath. That oath does not run out. It does not. It does not expire. All right. Ooh. The point I'm trying to say is, I'm challenging y'all. If y'all say y'all for the Constitution, is to educate yourself about the Constitution in regards, especially the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution, uh, gives the power back to the people when the federal government, all three bank branches of the federal government, have failed the people. So that's, what, that's all I got to say. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a, a very, very good poem. A uh, very good poem. And uh, I think we have uh, really, really got together tonight on two things. Number one, the first thing I heard when I came in here was communication. Through new types of communication, we got an ex unexpected number of people here. So it shows what we can do. Through experience, we have found out that we've got to do things correctly. We need to go at this positively, and I think we're jumping the gun a little bit, you know. Uh, I haven't got any, any information to go pick up anybody's guns yet, so let's keep that from happening. Uh, let's keep it from happening, and I understand it happens. And here tonight, I want us to put this force that we've got here towards preventing that and then educate myself and others. So if it does get to that point, what are our rights and what are our rights that can be protected that are protected by every veteran here? So I just want to make sure you know that, that we're here. This is a learning experience for us too. We don't claim to know everything. It changes every day. Yes, sir, in the back. Yes, uh, the different mayors of the states, uh, different counties uh, are, are writing letters to the administration so there's some concern. What's the North Carolina Sheriff Association doing on our behalf as citizens of North Carolina to the current administration in protecting our rights? Okay, for well, y'all didn't hear the question, but something like uh, mayors and elected officials are sending letters to uh, the powers to be in Washington, and he asked what the Sheriff's Association was doing uh, in that effort. And to answer you exactly what they're doing, I can't tell you because I haven't been to a meeting and we specifically address this, but we can get that answer. We can get you a correct answer. There's one thing that I do not want to do, and that's to put words in somebody else's mouth unless they've told me. But I can assure you we have a strong organization and we have sheriffs that uh, support the same things that people are here to not support. 